Okay, today let's spend a little time talking about the scientific method. And specifically, we're going to use a real historical example of the scientific method in action with a doctor named Ignaz Semmelweis. So Ignaz was a doctor in the mid-1800s. And this is the hospital where he worked, the Vienna General Hospital, and it was a very large teaching hospital. Well, he made an observation that there were two different maternity wards where women went to deliver babies. One of the maternity wards was staffed by trained doctors. The other was staffed by midwives. The death rate or the mortality rate for women who were in each of the wards was much higher on the ward where the doctors delivered the babies versus the midwives, to the point that women definitely preferred to go have their babies delivered by the midwives because the death rate was so high with the doctors. Well, he made an observation, which is the first step in the scientific method, and he noticed that the doctors performed autopsies in the morning, um, and then they went and delivered babies in the afternoon. Another observation he made was that a, fr a colleague, a friend of his, had cut himself during an autopsy and developed the same symptoms and died in the same way that these women were dying of childbirth fever. So he, he made a, a, a hypothesis and said he, he believed there was something that was being transferred from the autopsies, from the, the bodies from the autopsies, into the maternity ward and it was being transferred to those women during childbirth. So it's hard to believe because it, uh, nowadays we expect doctors and nurses to wash their hands between patients, but at the time that was not a common practice. And the doctors were truly doing autopsies without gloves. There were no gloves at this time, going directly to the maternity ward, delivering babies, and they were transferring what we now know as bacteria to the mothers as they were delivering the babies. He instituted a policy of hand washing, so he, uh, he, he required them to wash their hands in chlorine water, and, and the data is, is shown here, and that you can see this red line is where he instituted the hand washing policy, and the mortality rate dropped significantly during that time. Unfortunately, most of the doctors didn't like the policy, and they felt like it was a personal attack telling them they were dirty. And so Ignaz was actually asked to leave the hospital. The person who replaced him in order to make the doctors happy changed the policy and the death rate from childbed fever went up. But let's talk about the scientific method a little more um, with this example. Let's say that I'm interested in growing my own tomato plants and I want to get the best tomato yield I can out of my plants. So in this experiment, I'm going to try, I'm going to have three different groups, one with no plant food, one with miracle Grow plant food, and one with just manure. And I want my, my um, observation is that I've seen people growing tomato plants, and I know that they don't all grow as healthy as others or with as good of a tomato yield. So I, my hypothesis is, that let's say I'm going to pick miracle Grow. If I use miracle Grow plant food, I will get a better tomato yield than if I use no plant food or manure. Now, in this experimental setup, we need to identify what the independent variable is. The independent variable is the, the variable that you are manipulating. So this is the variable of the experiment. So in this case, whether we have plant food or not, and the type of plant food we have, this is the independent variable. This is what we're looking at. The dependent variable is that which depends on the independent variable. So we would need to decide before we set up the experiment what we're going to use as our measurement. So we might use, so we might use um, tomato yield, okay? We might use tomato, oops, tomato plant size, okay, larger plants. We might use the health of the plant, okay. All of these things are what we're after. So we have to decide what do we want to use as our, as our way to measure, okay. These all depend on, in our experiment, what type of plant food or lack of plant food we're using. Now, in order to make sure that our dependent variable truly adjusts only based on our independent variable, 
Some variables are going to be we want to control and keep the same across all the plants. These are called standard variables. Okay, standard variables are, this should say variable, not variation. Standard variables are things like sunlight. We want them to get equal sunlight. Things like water. We don't want one group of plants to get more water than the other. That could influence the outcome. Okay, it might be um, whether we use pesticides or not. If we use it for one, we use it for all. So at the end of my experiment, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to measure these things that we decided were the dependent variables, and I'm going to see if they support my hypothesis or not. So if, in fact, I don't see a difference, then I can say I can reject my hypothesis. If I do, in fact, get better tomato yields with miracle Grow, then I would say I fail to reject my hypothesis. But at that point, it doesn't make it absolutely true, right? The experiment would need to be repeated many times. After it's been repeated many times, then you might develop a theory. 